In today's video, we'll take a look at one of the highest burst damage builds you can achieve in Elden Ring. This takes full advantage of two of the most powerful status buildups right now in the game, which are the Bleed and the Frostbite, to provide maximum damage in the shortest amount of time possible, while also debuffing enemies. As I've explained in yesterday's video, we'll take full advantage of the Twin Blades class, which is by far the best category of weapons for this particular setup, so let's begin. Now starting with the weapons of choice, as I've said, we're gonna make heavy use of Twin Blades with this build, so if this is your first playthrough you can use a godskin peeler and a regular twin blade but if you have the option to get a friend help you in multiplayer or if you are on journey 2 you can get a second godskin peeler which is pretty much the best in slot option right now this is the best of the twin blades its ashes of war can be changed it has the highest scaling for this particular setup and of course since it's a twin blade like all other twin blades it will have a massive scale up of any status effect you apply on it even with minimal arcane investments the second reason why we're gonna make use of these is because of its power stancing L1 jumping special. Essentially, this unleashes four attacks in just less than a second, which almost always guarantees applying any status effect that exists on these weapons. Now, in terms of the Ashes of War, we're gonna make use of, in this case, the Seppuku with a bleed affinity, since we want to have as much bleed buildup as possible, since we're only using it on one weapon. For the second Twin Blade, we're gonna make use of the Chilling Mist. This is similar to that, as in it's going to create a frostbite buildup on your weapon but you also coat your weapon with further frost damage so it's going to be super easy to apply both of these status effects at the same time on the same target it's true that the chilling mist will have a bit of intelligence scaling but it's obviously going to be more important for an arcane build since you're going to be able to proc those frostbites super easy on almost any target now by default each one of these are amazing these are the only two kind of buildups in Elden Ring right now that also cause an additional damage explosion when they happen on the same target which means that if you use two of them at the same time you're going to deal double of that so that's a huge burst of damage that will literally take down any enemy in sight furthermore because you're using a frostbite buildup you will further debuff the enemy by another 20 percent in its defenses so any subsequent attacks will provide even more damage on the same target if it somehow happens to survive as far as attributes go we're gonna make use of high arcane so you will want to reach that 60 soft cap with it as fast as possible even though technically speaking yeah the affinities on the two weapons don't take advantage of it the bleed and the frostbite build up definitely will so it helps with that as i've explained in yesterday's video if we were to go with two seppukus on both of the weapons in that situation we would switch to occult scaling since that would give higher damage by about 22 percent but this is not the case so obviously we go with the bleed and the frostbite Everything else from this point out is about survivability and utility, so Vigor and Endurance are the next most important, and of course also a bit of points into the Mind Attribute so that you can cast these abilities in the first place. Now let's go over some of these items, these are a lot more important and will provide you a huge chunk of damage, about 150 to 200% damage increase if you do this properly. So you will want to use the White Mask with the Lords of Blood Exaltation, obviously between these two when you use a Seppuku or just create a blood loss will provide you a total of about 40% damage increase for a pretty long time so obviously this is the best choice in terms of the next couple of items this depends on how far you are in the game or how you completed Millicent's quest line if you did not complete that or if you're early you can obviously use Millicent's prostasis this gives you about like five points into dexterity but also raises attack power with successive attacks that being said the successive attack damage increase is not going to be anywhere on the same scale as the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia that you get also from the same quest line. This doesn't give you dexterity but increases your damage even more, about 6% per stack, and you can also stack these two at the same time, but you do need to also kill her after helping her at the end of her quest line to ensure that you get both these insignias at the same time. Between these two and the Lords of Blood Exaltation with the White Mask and of course having blood lost in your vicinity, you can literally exceed 1000 AR per each each of these weapons at the same time which is already insane with just a couple of attacks that's quite impressive given the fact that these are essentially in this case one-handed weapons so you would normally need a colossal weapon to even reach these types of levels with a high strength build so overall yeah i'm not a big fan of the cloth simply because the healing i find it to be marginal and there's way better like solutions like killing enemies way faster than they can even damage you finally we also use a radagon sword seal plus five into 
into the attributes that we need means we can achieve our goals a little bit faster but with that out of the way let's also talk a bit about the strategy as i've said we're gonna make use of the twin blades we're gonna want to power stance them and obviously you're going to want to press the l1 attack following a jump this is your bread and butter for this build and the main source of damage and status effect build up you're going to start every fight with a seppuku immediately followed by a frost mist reason being is because seppuku lasts a much longer time than the frozen mist so that's going to be the second application to make the most out of it once you reach the target simply jump perform the l1 and if it doesn't proc the two buildups within the first hit you're going to definitely proc it on the second one with a high arcane and with the whole setup having both of these two buildups happening at the same time are a much better solution than having these separately even if you were to go with either a high bleed or a high frostbite kind of setup reason being is because instead of only doing one source of damage you're doing both of them at the same time which provides a huge burst of damage against almost any target in the game this translates into thousands of damage and entire health bars disappearing in an instant it's overall very satisfying to actually pull it off and in case you're encountering any enemies that might have some sort of resistances to your damage you can obviously further debuff them using the chilling mist or at least the frostbite effect of it to further debuff their defenses by about 20 percent so you're essentially providing another source of damage increase on the same target if it happens to survive any longer the differences become even more obvious when you compare them to well just going pure bleed for example yes you still have high damage with that and the buildup happens fast but you're not getting that additional frostbite which can be very helpful for additional damage in this case that results in at least a 20 percent damage difference if not even more depending how prolonged the fight is and of the enemy's weaknesses in many of the situations against some of the bosses in the game this results in taking much larger hp bars than you were if you take with just a bleed setup now obviously there are some weaknesses to the build too in case you're fighting anything that's too small like let's just say something that's smaller than you you're going to have a hard time to hit all of the four attacks with the l1 jump with the power stancing of the twin blades it's just because the hitbox is way too small this is not a problem on anything that's well just about the size or larger than a human enemy but specifically from night and above and especially from brutes and above it becomes trivial to hit all four at the same time and ensure you create all of the buildups for some of these bosses it's even better because you're always going to hit them so the larger it is the more impactful this build is going to be another one is the fact that the frozen mist doesn't last for so long only about 20 seconds which is okay but this requires too much of an application and this means in combat you are not often going to have this chance this is why this build relies on the burst damage take down the boss or enemy faster than it has the chance to screw up your rotation or not give you the opening to cast another one but it's also quite a fast cast so if you can disengage and stay away you can still cast the frozen mist and in itself it also deals quite a high amount of damage so it could be situationally good overall this is it with the build of course let me know down below what's your opinion of it are you using something similar to this or are you running with a different setup thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video